Hi everyone, we're just going to wait for a little uh, second, we're going to have Adele joining us just in a sec. Hi Yannick, hi everybody, thanks for joining, we're just about to start. Um, I think Daniel is coming in just a second. Hi, <laughs> Buen noche. <laughs> Bonjour. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to see everybody. So, Danielle is uh, just connecting at the moment. Uh, if you bear with us another couple of uh, seconds, I want to say, not minutes, hopefully, we're going to be ready to go. Is, uh, the drawers of live events sometimes it doesn't go quite exactly as quickly as we want it to <clears throat> hello oh, there we go <laughs> we all said amazing thanks for joining i'm so excited to do this with you I know. <laughs> it's been a long time. It has. So I'll uh, give everybody a little bit of background. So Danielle and I met uh, in Sri Lanka. We actually did our yoga teacher training together. It was quite an adventure. We were in a beautiful, beautiful setting. And um, we also have uh, England in common. And um, we've both spent a lot of time there. Danielle is from the UK. And then we spent a lot of time together in Bali. So we've been in all corners yeah. of the world. And Three. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's exciting. And I'm so glad you could uh, join us tonight. Daniela, I know that breathwork is a big part of what you do. And I would love for you to start the event by giving us your perspective of what pranayama is to you, what it means to you, and how you would best introduce it to everybody that's listening today. Okay, so most people obviously know like breath work as just breath work and um, breath control, but in Sanskrit, like yoga, meditation, it's called pranayama. And um, pranayama is split up into two sections. So prana means life force and the yama means control. So in a way, you are taking control of your life through your breath because your breath is your life so without our breath we obviously wouldn't be breathing we wouldn't be alive so it kind of makes sense I really like the analogy of um of the scan the Sanskrit name I love that you just mentioned that Daniela because I feel that the problem with breath right is we just take it for granted and the reason I say that is we literally go on autopilot. If we didn't, we would be dead by now. So I just mm. thought that just to get everybody aware of how important it is to think about breath work, I thought I would just run some statistics very quickly. We breathe roughly about 16 times per minute. So it will be about 23,000 breaths a day. Um, about 960 breaths an hour. and how many of those breaths do we really take consciously? By that I mean, how often do you think I'm inhaling and I'm exhaling as opposed to just go on autopilot and let your body do what it does best? And sure, mm -hmm. it does it for you. But I think we really want to raise awareness on how important it is to tap into your breath and become aware and become conscious and I know that conscious breathing is a bit of a mouthful and it can sound very you know very yogic and very sort of um, a very hard to grasp concept for everyone that hasn't practiced yoga but it really is as simple as becoming mm. aware of the fact that you're breathing that's what we're talking about yeah it's definitely just like breath awareness is just being aware of your breath and because obviously we're breathing all the time and it like you said it's a natural thing we do every day um 
we're, we're never normally aware of it because it's so natural to us. But when you come aware of your breath, then you'll be able to, then you're able to control your breath as well, which is, that's when it's, things start to get interesting when you start, when you can control your breath because how it, how your mood um, mm-hmm. changes with the control of your breath. So. Of course. And the, I, it's really key that you said that because if you don't learn to control your breath, then one day your breath will control you. What I mean by that is I'm thinking about like panic attack on an anxiety attack. We've probably all been there. It's, it's happened to many of us, I'm sure. Um, and, and one of the key aspects of an anxiety or a panic attack is that you go into the the shallow mm. thing, right? And that actually, that really, really, really um, gets you into a fight or flight mode because you, uh, you, you, you're really stressed and your breath is actually gonna make it worse because mm. the more you breathe that way, the more anxious you become. And in that moment, if you learn to really calm your breath down, become aware of your breath and calm it down, it can almost instantly shift the mindset mm. and puts you back in a calmer mood. Mm. Yeah. I think when people get anxious, they like hyperventilate. So they're like breathing really fast and they have no control of the breath. And it is like a bit of a catch to- 22 where you're like yeah it makes you feel worse but I think that's the thing with like everything in life when you become aware of it you can then control it so absolutely yeah and um, um, yes uh, I, it really is about awareness and one one of the we're going to present uh, four different type of breath work today um, so I'll, I'll, I'll give it a start with two little demonstration and then Daniel will uh, give us your other two demonstration. So the first one that I wanted to do today um, is actually very simple. Uh, it's called box breathing. And the reason it's called box breathing is if you think about it, if you drew it on a piece of paper, you would literally could, you could see a, a box. Um, so I'm gonna try and draw an imaginary uh, piece of paper. And, and this is really as simple as this. So you're gonna start by an inhale through the nose and we're going to look a little bit funny, guys, during this demonstration, okay? <laughs> so all glamour goes out of the window here. We're going into practical aspect, and we're going to guide you through this. Okay, so here we come. So we're going to go inhale. We're going to try to keep a count of four seconds. So inhale, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to hold one, two, three, four. Then we're going to exhale, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to hold again, one, two, three, four. And you can see how I've drawn that little square, hence the box breathing. Okay, so I'm just going to do it and demonstrate with my hand because it's quite hard to talk and demonstrate at the same time. So just bear with me. We're going to take inhale, one, two, hold, exhale. Hold. And then inhale again. And the idea is to do this at least five to ten times. And you can really sort of increase the amount of time you do it and the length of time you do it. If four times is too much of a challenge for the holding part, then don't be too hard on yourself. Reduce it down and say inhale three, hold three, exhale three, hold three. It's not so important how many seconds you hold it. If it has to be two, it will be two. What is very important though, is that you mirror the inhale with the hold, with the exhale, with the hold. You want that kind of square movement. So you're gonna inhale and hold and exhale and hold the exact same amount of time. So if your given number is two seconds before, because four seconds is too much for today, that's beautiful. We're gonna do two seconds. And then you can build it up and, w- and work your way towards three, towards four seconds, towards five seconds. I like to do five seconds, but that's super personal. So that's one that you can start today. And when we do the post later on with Danielle, we're going to write little tips and reminders on how to do those techniques. That's box breathing. The second one that I'm going to introduce to you today, it's called the humming bee. 
Um, so that can be quite an advanced technique that is used by yogi. And the reason I say it can be quite advanced is because it is based on the foundation that you will go through sensory deprivation, meaning to focus on your breath, you're going to deprive yourself of your sight, you're not going to be smelling, so you're going to close your nostril, you're going to close your eyes. However, this gesture is, I would say, quite advanced, and I really love to introduce that once you've done a few breath work and you've already practiced that humming bee. Tonight, we're going to do an entry-level breath work practice, and I'm going to really show you a technique to go from I've never done breath work to I'm doing it tonight, no problem. So I'm going to simplify it a lot for you tonight. So it's not the authentic yogic technique, it's the beginner entry level, let's make us a comfortable technique. All right. So it's called humming bee because you're going to sound like a little bee. The reason you do that, you're going to go inhale through the nose and exhale. And when you exhale, you're going to go into a mm, sound. So we're not trying to make the um or the um th sound that you could have uh, heard from yogis. We're trying to mimic the sound of a little bee here. So you're going to keep your mouth closed and you need to feel that vibration almost down your throat and really feel that almost throat massage that you're giving yourself with your breath. So I'm just going to demonstrate it. The ideal situation is for you to close your hand, uh, to close your ears with your hand. Um, so you're going to, thank you. <laughs> you <gonna laughs> put your little hands on your ears. The reason for that is because then you can really go inwards, close your eyes, listen to your the own sound, listen to the vibration and really feel the vibration down your throat. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to demonstrate it for you now. I'm going to take a deep inhale through the nose. And then if you were to do that in your own time, in your own home, you will do it again and again and again. That is an amazing one to do if you're struggling to sleep, if you have anxious thoughts, if you just had a conflict with a loved one, or if you just had a difficult conversation at work, you can literally go to the bathroom and do this. One thing I would say, though, a little word of advice, please do not ever do any breath work when you're driving, operating a vehicle, or doing anything that could, you know, end up in an accident. We don't want that. Um, breath work can actually really make you react in a funny way, especially if you're new to breath work. So it's really good to do it in a safe environment, preferably sat down and ideally laying down if you're new to breath work. Just know that you're really safe, know that you cannot fall, know that you cannot hurt yourself and by no means do you want to drive when you're doing breath work. So really try to do one thing at a time. And breath work is something that should be done in itself and that alone. So with that being said, I will give the floor to Danielle. And she's going to introduce you to two other beautiful breath work techniques. Okay. So these two are um, yoga techniques. And the first one is Nadi Shohan. And this again can be broken up into two sections. So Nadi means channel and Shohan means cleansing and purifying. So in a sense, you're cleansing and purifying your breath and it, you're channeling the breath through your body, literally like in a circular kind of motion because we're going to be exhaling and inhaling. So to start with, you place the middle two fingers on your forehead and one finger on your nose and the thumb um, on the one nostril. So we're going to be taking an inhale. I think start with the left hand side. So open this nostril up while you're closing the other nostril. So we're basically going to be opening and closing a nostril while we breathe in. Exhaling in, closing, and then exhaling out the other side. So I'll just demonstrate for you. <laughs> okay. So inhale. 
Close. Exhale, releasing the breath. Inhale, close. Open the other side. Exhale, release. So it's really good to do this um, repeatedly each time for probably about five to ten times, but as long as you like, really, the more the better. The longer you do it, the more um, relaxed your breath will become because it will even out. Your inhale and your exhale will even out, so you will become more relaxed. Your nervous system will calm down, um, and it will just relax you. Um, so I'll just do it again for people. Inhale. Close. Open the other side, exhale. Inhale through this side, close. Open the other side, exhale. And then just repeat as many times as you want. So the second one is Kapalabhati. Again, this can be broken up into two sections. So Kapala means skull and Bhati means um, shining. So in a way you are doing this breath work you're going to be shining as in like feeling awake um awakening your brain in a sense so you're going to be awakening your brain making you feel more active making you feel more alive so this is really good if you're feeling tired concentrate on focus on um just to really activate your brain so um, this is a, we're going to be doing inhales, exhales. So we're going to be forcing the exhale out fast, like very like quick um, forced exhales, which will automatically make, our, make um, us inhale naturally. So we're going to be forcing exhale and then we're naturally going to be inhaling. So we're going to like do this from the belly. So as we start, just really pay attention to your belly, your lower abdomen. And then you can kind of breathe in, take your breath down to your belly, exhale out. And then we'll start by going maybe a round of 10 to begin with. So as you're doing that, after, just close your eyes, relax, and then you can repeat it again another 10 times. So you can do that 10 times, go back to your natural breath, and then repeat it. Okay, so there's those two. <laughs> Amazing, Naomi, you did it so good. I love that you demonstrated those, and I think it's really important to try different techniques the most and to really not be too hard on yourself this is something that this is a little treasure to yourself this is really an act of self-love an act of self-care so there is no room for self-loathing or for force or determination or, or curiosity which is uh, almost in a child childlike manner like okay let me let me give that a try today and there is no success there is just trying and embracing um the fact that you're doing it and if everything that you just heard seemed too much the uh, message that we want to give you is remember to become aware of your breath if you're going to take only this away from this live event today i would love for you tonight to become aware of your inhale and your exhale at least five times. Just five times, become aware of the fact that you're inhaling and become aware of the fact that you're exhaling. Maybe you can do that before you fall asleep. Um, now, Danielle, I know that you're um, teaching and coaching this holistic business approach, and I'm such a big fan of that. And I would love for you to share a little bit about the role that breathwork has to play in a corporate or work environment? So I think taking a holistic approach to business is really beneficial in many ways. But um, because it's, it, you know, we're, at, we're in like work eight hours a day, which is a majority of our lives. So it's really important that we integrate a good system for ourselves 
um, into our lives. So I think doing this breath work can be beneficial in many ways. It can be relaxing. It can help you relax at the end of the day. Um, so then you can create a boundary between your work life balance. So it can create a boundary for you to relax at the end of the day, then step into the next phase of your day. You can also use it um, to activate you and make you feel more awake. So if you're going to work, it's a really good one. I think it's a really good one to do in the morning when you first wake up because um, it will activate you for the day. It will make you feel more focused at work and therefore, you're, yeah, it would make you feel more focused um, and then, you know, you will get your tasks, tasks done a little bit more, a little bit easier. And then as well, maybe a third thing is... If you're feeling any anxiety throughout the day, you can look at some of these breath work um, options to do to just calm yourself down if you're in a stressful environment. Um, because then you, once you calm yourself down, you will be able to then focus more and be more proactive. So. Yeah, and the great thing about breath work, and that's why I think it's important to talk about it in a corporate environment or in a work uh, work environment, is because it's so transportable. The only thing that you need is you, your breath, right? It's not one of those mm. where you need your yoga mat and you're going to need a shower and you're going to need to see your boss in a downward facing dog and you might not want to see that. <laughs> it's just one of those that you can just do uh, anytime and you can do it with yourself and it's it's really a self-practice and it's something that you can gradually, gradually um, get really more confident with. And there is such a parallel between the quality of your breath and the quality of your life. There is an old yogic saying, saying that the quality of your life will be as good as the, the quality of your breath. And I think there is, there is a lot that can be said on that. We really don't think about the quality of our breath enough. And if you look at it um, and you measure the exhale, so if you lengthen your exhale, mm -hmm. automatically the response for your inhale will be to be longer as well. So you can really soothe yourself with your breath by adopting this belly breath. Of course, you don't mm -hmm. breathe from your belly, but we say belly breath because the belly is going to rise and fall. And so it's a really amazing way to, to nurture yourself. Um, and all you need is, is your body and your awareness, mm -hmm. which I think is, is an, understated, um, an understated tool and one of the most mm -hmm. fundamental uh, tools to hack your health. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, actually, because I know you're into biohacking, and how do you, how would you use breath work in biohacking? I, I use it daily. So my favorite type of uh, biohacking breath that uh, I do is the Vinhoff breathing method. And um, there is a little app that you can download, and that will give you uh, a very dynamic kind of breath. Uh, it's very rhythmic, he does recording, and it's fundamental to a lot of the exercises because, for example, if you're going to do an ice bath or a cold exposure, it would be not impossible, nothing's impossible, the mind is a limit, but it would be quite a challenge if you have done it without the breath preparation. And it just, I think that the breath is the get, gateway between the mind and the body. And my definition of of biohacking is of course hacking your own biology that's a given but it's also you know going into that sort of spiritual level of how do you tap into your your physical body but also your subtle your subtle bodies how do you make that healthy connection between a mind that is going to function well and a body that's going to respond accordingly and I think, especially if we're thinking about our different nervous system, and if you really want to activate your parasympathetic nervous system that is responsible for the rest and digest mode, it will be really difficult to access that without accessing the breath and without calming the breath down. You calm the breath down, you calm yourself down. You control your breath, such as in a Vinhoff type of exercise, you feel like a superhero, you know, and... And, and biohacking to me is, is being that superhuman that we already are, but just removing all the 
all the shit that makes us mm -hmm. not be the superhuman that we are and that diminishes our capacities and our capabilities and, and to become the best version of ourselves. And I think it is fundamental to embrace daily breath work if you want to be the best version of yourself physically, spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically. Mm -hmm. It's strange because it's like such a simple thing, breath, um, but it makes such a massive impact on our lives. Yeah, it really, really does. It's, it's massively improved the quality of my life. And, and that's why I felt really passionate about sharing this topic today. And I'm so grateful that you shared the techniques with us because I think that if we can all raise awareness and have more people do regular breath work, then maybe, uh, maybe the whole world can be a mm. better place. <laughs> I think there is actually some statistics that statistically there's been studies that show it actually breath work is is a kind of meditation so it can it like statistically it has improved to um decrease people's depression um anxiety and then also make them feel like more happy joyful so it's kind of creating kind of um like happy hormones in your body so yeah that's very interesting yeah, absolutely. And um, it's, it's really not talked about enough. So it's, it's a great thing to, to tap into. Uh, on that note, I'm actually uh, releasing a blog this week on breath work and different techniques. So I will summarize everything that we talked about. And I will share it with everybody if that's of interest. And any question that you might have, we have a few minutes left um, on breath work, we would love to answer them. So just uh, anyone that has a, a burning question, uh, we will be happy to, happy to address it. <laughs> Great. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. And thank um, you. We'll do more series as part of our Motivation Mondays. Um, yes. Motivation yes. To try to keep everyone interested and to really be the healthiest version of yourself that you can be. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Likewise, as ever. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>